Well, hello everybody, Dr. Keith here. Happy Wednesday, February 10th. How's everyone doing? Hope you've having a great week. Hopefully everything's going well. Excellent, Tom, excellent. That was weird, my Zoom was actually saying I was still muted, but I see I'm not. So based on your responses, you can see me and I assume you can see my, my charts. Today will probably be a little bit less than 45 minutes. Um, I do have to be somewhere in an hour. Uh, but other than that, we got a lot to cover, so we'll get started right away. Um, so a few things. Now let's just take a look at the, the S&P here, okay? So, you know, again, my purpose of these sessions is to give you my overall, you know, bias of the markets. So no matter how you're trading, whether it's futures or or stocks, right? That you know you have my my viewpoint, but then also to give you some tools, at least show you some of the tools I'm using to to really gauge and have a trading system. Okay, and I know as I see most of you are familiar faces here. It's great to see you each week. I appreciate that. Uh, it means obviously that you know you you like listening to at least what I have to say, even if you have your own trading style. Okay. But so in saying that, you know, again, I want to go back. I, I talked about this a little bit last week, though. So on the ES, right, the S&P, you know, where I find Hakanachi extremely valuable is a couple of reasons. So when you have the, the downturn here, back here, right, and you hit the bottom band, and then we had a potential turnaround, you know, look where Hakanachi then allows us to, you know, after this bar closed, you had a green Hakanachi bar in this nice, nice uptrend, right? The, the thought was until now, Hakanachi turns red on us, you know, or two red bars is even my more favorite trend change. We should, we should continue, right? But again, when you analyze these Hakanachi bars, folks, okay, remember the, the line I had programmed here, the white is the open, the red is the close, okay? So I, again, just as a good indicator, back here on the third, Okay, again, let me blow it up just a little bit more for you. Okay. So here on the third, price closed up just a little bit, but look at how wide the Hakanachi candle is. Okay. So that is a still a bullish move, even though actual price didn't do much that particular day. That's how you can stay into these trends, whether you're, you know, no matter what you're trading, right? And obviously nothing's guaranteed. There's nothing's going to be perfect. But, you know, these last few days in the market, you know, again, yesterday was a, not much of a move day, but the Hakanachi is nice and solid. Now we're starting the day. If, if today closes down a tad in price, okay, but if it closes just like it does, it, it is right now. We still have three hours, right? For, who knows what can happen in three hours. But even though it's going to close up green, if the wick becomes smaller, kind of like it did back here during this consolidation, okay? That's telling you possibly we're getting a move back to the downside. Again, you don't have to react off of that yet until you get a red dot, right? Or you get a, a one or a yellow dot, which would be a one red Hakanachi candle. Uh, but that's how you can really, you know, stay in some of these trends and, and, and just try to kill the market, okay? Now, look at the ADX. Okay, we have gone red now the last couple of days, just under right around 14. And so what this tells me is a couple of things. One, you know, we hit new highs yesterday or today, I'm sorry, right? But typically we hit new highs, you know, at some point we're going to have a retracement. We don't know how far, right? When it happened over here, we came all the way back down to the bottom Bollinger Band. We know from a seasonal perspective, Coming up in the next week or two, we do typically have a move down in the markets, okay? Big picture markets, right? This is the future S&P here, okay? So, you know, new highs, if we start getting, if, again, we get some consolidation, obviously we wanna wait for that like gear trigger short, right? We could be looking for short soon for the next four to six weeks, okay? But again, even though, you know, seasonality, powerful, you're fighting this massive uptrend. So if you don't like to do that, what do you do? You wait, you know, you'll, you'll wait to see how long this dip's going to be, keep your powder dry, 
and then look for the long play if you're only looking to buy stocks, okay? And, and the, the, the point is, we could get another pullback to the bottom band at some point. Again, I'm not seeing it yet, and that's not the purpose of what I'm telling you right now. Uh, all I'm saying is that at some point, typically mid-February, we start getting a pullback in, in the markets, okay? Traders are still, retailer traders in the world are still short the markets, more short than they were last week, okay? That's why, again, we continue to see this move up. Um, so would it surprise me if we continue higher? Everything I'm looking at right now says yes, higher to consolidate, okay, until that changes. And again, with the ADX now turning red, we could start seeing some potential consolidation, okay? Well, that's kind of where I'm at right now on, on big picture on the on the markets right now. You know, the Dow's up 25, the ES is down four, the NASDAQ's down 43. So if you bring up the NASDAQ, right, again, they all hit new highs today, right? Uh, well, at least the NASDAQ and the ES, let's see, did the Dow? Yeah, they all hit new highs today, okay? So what happens at highs like that, right, at certain levels? profit taking, stop losses. That's why it's you know no surprise if we see a little bit of, of a move down at that point, okay? Back here, I, I had a nice trigger long. You can see I didn't get filled though because I didn't get a pullback. I was a little bit of a pullback I was looking for. Or I'd still be in this trade, okay? And that happens in trading. You have rules. I wanted a little pullback intraday in that Dow. Didn't get it. But again, if I did, you know, let's say I would have been able to get filled Okay, there would have been no reason for me to exit this trade yet. Okay. All right, let's look at, let me put these in alphabetical for a second. The VIX. So remember, we talked about this last week. It, it really doesn't get much better than this, right? You have the, the, the quick move up, right? Now it headed right back down. These are good trades, folks. You'll get used to this. If you're not used to the VIX, go back and look. You know, when you have the quick moves up, that's the fear. Once it's over, okay, you can play this, okay? You can play it over and over again. Again, this was a, a very nice predictable move. Multiple ways of playing this. Credit spreads is a, is a one good reason, you know, one way of doing it because the volatility is high up here, right? But but anyway, keep an eye on the VIX. Next spike, you know, look for it. Once it consolidates and we get that red dot, okay, that was a good a good short play, okay? Yeah, Mike, I prefer, so in this particular play, yeah, I'm going to use the VXX over the, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yep, good question. Okay. Very predictable though, right? That's my point. I mean, you don't know exactly when it's going to top, but that's what you have the Laguerre or the dot, the red dots for, right? So you don't have to guess, you know, I'm just going back here a little bit. We had a nice spike here, a nine, four, and then bam, right? A, a spike up here on 1029 and then bam. It's a very, very predictable move that happens. And, um, you know, if in February, mid-February here, we do get another move up, okay, you'll all be ready for it next time if you didn't take it, okay? Jumping the gun can be dangerous, you know, so there's no reason to jump the gun, but uh, fear doesn't last as long, and then the market normalizes, okay? Okay, Jim. Got it. All right. So uh, again, um, let me just talk a little bit about Bitcoin. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, on Bitcoin here, you know, again, just another great example of how I think Hakanachi helps you, right? We, we had the normal January pullback, right? But you didn't have to overthink it. When do I get back in long if I want to go long? And again, when I say Bitcoin, I'm not trading the futures on Bitcoin, okay? 
not at this point anyway. The margin's crazy. The volatility's crazy. But there's a lot of ways to play Bitcoin. Okay, and I just like to show the futures chart. But anyway, you know, then you've got right here, right? Here's your entry. Here's your entry. You're following the rules. Remember, you're in an uptrend, right? So we prefer longs anyway. Certainly, you could have took in the, taken the short in, in, in January because seasonality-wise, January is a short month, okay? For, for whatever reason, Bitcoin declines in January, okay? But now here we are. So again, even though today we're down, Right, what is, what is Hakanachi saying? That's right, it's tapping me on my shoulder. Again, I hope my wife never hears me say this. It's like my wife, Hakanachi's like my wife, right? The, just Keith, relax, right? It's all good type of thing. And um, that's what Hakanachi is. You know, if you're in this type of trade, there, there's no reason, even though it's down today, right? See how price is down and this is the open. Again, if you were in this trade, you know, you took some profits, but there's no reason, in my opinion, for you to exit this trade yet, okay? You know, again, so what are some, some ways to play that? You know, you can always look at GBTC, right? You can always do that. I had a nice trade on, on Riot. Let me bring that one up. <clears throat> okay, had a nice, nice trade on Riot. And, you know, those of you that know, my target for 2021 based off of my seasonal projections was 40 and it already hit that. So darn it, I should have went higher. But, um, you know, this is one that we got the trigger just like we do with Bitcoin and you just don't know how he's gonna, how high he's gonna go now, right? So in this case, there's no reason to exit all of your trade. Okay, I took partial profits on this with break even stops. Right. And now I'm going to try to see if, you know, the cool thing about cryptocurrencies and, and riot and, and block, you know, the blockchains and that when they move, they, when they get going, they can really move. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Ethereum could be a good one. Absolutely. I mean, they're all, they're good, all, good, all, all good opportunities. Okay. <clears throat> Without question. I have a few of my favorites. You know, what's funny is, we're, and I have this question mark because I'm still kind of following it, but Pan American Silver has kind of followed Bitcoin you know, pretty nicely. Um, it's not going quite as well as, as the current move on Bitcoin though, but it's cheaper, right? So you can, some of my favorites here to look at, you can sort by, you know, the cheaper prices, you know, OR is one that um, I've been kind of watching, you know, uh, Robo has been kind of leading it. So, you know, these, these are all some stocks that have been highly correlated, at least most of them in the past with, with Bitcoin. You know, look at, look at SBNY. Some of these are going to go much, much higher, folks. Um, you know, much, much higher. VSH, you know, if you like a little bit cheaper, again, you can see a little bit more volatility here because it had its earnings, okay? But, but now it's right back up and it's hitting, you know, be hitting new highs here soon as well. So... Um, just another market that you can trade, you know, it, but still, you know, trade stocks and most of them have options and so forth that I have on here. You know, it's just a fun way of doing it. You know, look at D now, you know, again, instead of trading Bitcoin, you know, what if you would have traded something like D now, okay? Same rules, same triggers. Again, no reason to think it's time, you know, to, to exit those trades, okay? Again, the Ethereum, <clears throat> like Jim was saying, you know, right here. So if you got right back in off the green, right here, you know, you, and today's an indecision day in Ethereum, right? So, um, but just, just following the rules, okay? All right, so Facebook, again, we had a, a trigger right here. Um, remember the ADX is low though. So I, I'm expecting some consolidation. Here's what I'm personally looking for on Facebook though. At some point, I do believe the market's going to have a dip this month, Come, you know, over the next four to six weeks, at some point, we're going to have a pretty significant move down or maybe not significant, but enough that, you know, we can get discounts, right? Well, Facebook is one that I'm looking for. I'm not looking to get long again right now, even though it could, you know, it could certainly move up here quickly, but, you know, once we get into mid-March, if price is down here, let's say at this 246 level, 
right? And we get a new trigger or a Hakanachi, you know, yellow to, to green. Okay. And that could be a, a better opportunity for me. So all I'm trying to do is, is show some patient, patience on something like Facebook. Because obviously it's going to go higher. It's going to be higher than what it is now a year from now. Okay. With, with high likelihood anyway. Right. But if we can get in at much lower, 246 versus 272, because we know this is off five year because we don't have 10 year data yet. On the five year, once we get past this normal dip in the markets, look at Facebook, right? So then you can look to do a, heck, I mean, I'm going to look at doing like a September expiration option play on that, okay? So you have to have a plan. AMD, again, we love AMD. Everybody loves AMD. We had a trigger here, okay? Um, again, if you're looking to do a more of a longer term play, you know, it, it does look like it could potentially consolidate a little bit here. Um, you know, it is in this downward channel, you know, so to me, you know, I like AMD. Um, I mean, I didn't take this yet. What I'm looking for is it to kind of break out and then come back and then give me a new entry. You can, you can be very patient on AMD, right? It's got a great move coming. All right, so, you know, AMC, <clears throat> what do you think? How many of you, how many of you have bought it, bought it at 20 bucks? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, absolutely, AJ, we'll look at that. So, you know, so here's the thing with AMC, okay? When, you, when it's in the news and there's a lot of speculation going on, one, there's more volatility on that stock. So I don't usually trade it, okay? And, and I had a client of mine say back here, you know, he was going to short this, or, or do you recommend shorting it because of the big move up? And, and I said, no, I wouldn't personally. Darn it, we should have, right? No, no. And the reason was, though, because it's unpredictable, though, okay? So now you can always play the risk versus reward game, right? Where based on your option play, you, you know, let's say you're risking 500 to maybe make 2,000, you know, then you can do these type of plays. But here's what I'm looking for, in all honesty, and I've, I've never traded AMC, but if we get a long trigger on this, okay, I'll actually be looking for a long possibility. Not being a seasonal move though, more, more, an old, more of a, a short float type of move. Okay, so more to come on that, but you know, my, my point is why I wanted to bring it up was, when you have a stock or stocks making news, you know, the Reddit versus the, you know, versus the, institutions and so forth, then you probably want to either stay out or, you know, always, you can always do trades where the risk and the, you're okay with the risk with the big potential reward, right? I didn't do a short play on here um, because honestly, I, I just, it wasn't in my risk tolerance, but you know, I know many of you probably, probably did. Okay. You know, just like with GameStop. Okay. Same exact thing, right? Uh, when the new short float interest comes out, if we're still, if these are still heavily shorted, what I'm looking at doing on, on those two as a more speculative high, you know, it's not a seasonal play at all, is, you know, if we get a trigger, I will look to do a long play on that. Um, and I'll talk more about that when I, when and if I do that. But at this point, I'm not, you know, doing anything at this point yet. Okay. Oh, absolutely, Bill. Okay, so let's see here. What else do I want to talk about? So gold. <clears throat> so gold, you know, again, made money on it th this year, enough to buy maybe my wife and maybe one of my kids Christmas presents. That was it. It wasn't a great, great gold play this year. Okay, last year into this year, right? Made money and then it, then it came right back down and stopped me out, you know, with part of my trade. But anyway, you know, now, you know, we typically are close to a top or more consolidation on gold till we, till we get a little bit further out here. Um, so you won't see me talk much about gold as far as plays, you know, but you can always play the Hakanachi and the Laguerre for shorter moves. Okay. You know, is gold probably going to pop now at least up here to this, you know, 1880 level? Probably. Okay. Or maybe to these wicks at 1870. You know, you can play shorter term on that. Uh, I'm just not super excited right now on that. If I was going to do anything, it would be palladium. 
okay, but again, the margin on palladium and the volume is, isn't the greatest, but palladium moves pretty nicely, okay? All right, NVIDIA, I had a couple questions this week on NVIDIA. Uh, you know, again, it's about being patient, right? So I know some people were in back here. And again, the only thing that I was concerned about back here was you see how the ADX was trending red, which means we could consolidate. Now we're starting to break out of that, right? And, you know, the gear headed up, you know, right here is a potential re-entry on that. But, but now what I'm looking for you know, this is one of my trade of the year. So the next pullback we get, you know, probably during this, you know, or maybe earnings, who knows what'll happen on earnings, which is on the 24th, okay? There'll be a new entry opportunity on the NVIDIA, okay? So if you were concerned, if you didn't take this, hold on, don't, don't go in at the highs here, we'll get a better entry opportunity, okay? Same with Tesla, okay? I, I'm hoping Tesla comes down here a little bit, not too much, because I know some of you own it, <laughs> uh, but enough that then when we get that new March March trigger, okay, we get a little bit discount there on Tesla. So again, those are kind of my, uh, AJ, you know, so AJ has a good question and I'm not much of a fundamental guy, uh, even though my background, you know, my finance background, my teaching, you know, background, I know a lot of that stuff, but I don't trade fundamentals too much. But his point was, you know, with inflation worries, could gold go higher? I mean, my thought would be this. Let me just go back to gold. You know, once we get into March, left to right, we go higher, right? From March, you know, March to August. So I, I do believe it's going to go higher. Okay, but I'm waiting for that next dip first before it goes. Okay, fundamentally, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. One, anytime there's some, you would, so back here though, okay, back in January when there's all this uncertainty, right, with COVID, election, riots, everything going on, you would think, okay, people are going to put their money in gold. Okay, well, why did gold go down there, right? Then people are going to say, well, because they put it in Bitcoin instead. So there's always a reason of something, right? So that's why I follow what history has been doing year over year, okay? But I do believe gold is going to go higher. I just think it's going to dip first potentially, okay? Great question. Okay. All right, so a couple of you out there, I want to make sure I get to those before I go into my next lesson. Hopefully you have your notepad. No, nah, I don't want to be boring. All right, so COF, let's take a look. So Capital One's a trade I'm in short. Okay, I was hedging that with my long plays. Okay, now what I do like about it is I'm, I'm down about 48% of this option play, I think, right now. But here's what I do like about it you know, we're, we're at these highs here, and typically we will have retracements. So I do believe, um, you know, as long as if it goes, keeps going higher the next two or three or four days, I'll be out. I'm going to, you know, cut my losses. But if we start getting that turnaround, I think it'll turn around pretty fast. Um, and you can see what I looked at, right? What I like about it is we typically have a dip right about now, okay? Um, so that, that's where we're at right now on, on Capital One. Um, Hakanachi right now is, is still saying bullish. Um, we're at new highs on Capital One. It broke through this right here. You know, so again, if we get a couple more, it's not a huge fast mover, but if we get a couple more days to the upside, green Hakanachis, it'll probably be time to, to exit that short play. If you're long, keep going. Keep going until he tells you otherwise, okay? All right, so Neo, yeah, again, I'm just, at this point, I wanna see a retracement before, before we go higher, okay? That's what I'm, what I'm looking for. All right, yeah, let's talk pizza. Man, was that a good Super Bowl or what? It was if you like, if you like Brady, right? <laughs> All right, so, you know, again, the, the, the thing I haven't liked about Domino's the entire time recently has been the, the ADX, right? It does look like now it wants to break out, okay? So I do think it's gonna make its move. Earnings will probably gap up. Historically, that's what it did last year anyway. Who knows what's gonna happen though, but people are eating a lot of pizza. 
Um, we'll wait and see. But yeah, I mean, I like it to long play. It's broken out of this consolidation now, so it could, you know, go up pretty quickly at this point. Okay. If you're not in dominoes yet, absolutely a good opportunity for you. Okay. I'm, I'm in it already. Um, I'm looking at adding more to my position. I went in at half size back when I went in. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, look at dominoes, right? <clears throat> okay. So there was a UCO. Let's take a look. Yeah, so again, you know, the, the beauty on this, however you found it, if you went long on this, okay, here's the beauty. Do you exit yet? Of course not. You can take partial profit, you can do it, or you can trail your stop, however you want to manage that trade, okay? But yeah, again, today's a good example. Not a huge move on price, right? Open close at this point anyway, the close. But Hakanachi is still saying, yeah, we're going to keep going higher. Just relax. Just relax, okay? Wait for that red dot or yellow dot. The other thing I do like about this is too, on the weekly, you've got, you know, have solid green dots as well, okay? And we got some institutional buying. Still playing with this indicator here, so I'm not even gonna talk about it yet that I've, that I've kind of created here, okay? So we got a lot of good stuff with you with that, that you crude oil, uh, you know, and, and talking about crude, by the way, so let me bring up crude. It'll look pretty similar, okay? So look at the type of entries you can get, right? So we've talked about crude where during the seasonal down, it was, it was stronger. So we'd only want to look for long plays, right? So if you're a crude trader and you're going off the daily chart, right? You had your re-entry here on the second, okay? You had it on the second. If you got in at roughly 50, 53, 50, I don't know, let's just say, right? You're doing really well, but again, there's no reason to exit, right? Or if you got in off of a four hour chart, right? The entry back was on nine o'clock on some Monday, you know, far, far away. <laughs> and just look at the green and yellow dots, right? There's no red dots, folks, no red dots until nine o'clock right here, okay? So you can play that, you know, many different ways, depending on your risk tolerance, you could do it with an hour chart, you know, depending on, you know, again, how, how, how far do you want to go out? <clears throat> but at this point, and I know I saw some about supply and demand on oil, but you know, that's typically what it does now. And uh, certainly there's no reason to think it's going to do anything different right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. OVID. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, let me bring this up. I'm doing a webinar tomorrow night on data mining. Let me put that in the chat so that if you haven't registered, because you can get the recording if you can't make it tomorrow night. Okay, I just put that in the chat for everybody. And I'm also, before so I don't forget, those of you that don't have it, most of you on this live session do have it though. I am offering a special deal tomorrow night on that. You can look at that as well. If you don't have it, you can get it ahead of time if you want. Okay. Oh, thanks, John. I mean, it's data, right? It's phenomenal data. And I mean, of course I'm biased, right? But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go over that in a minute here. But so anyway, OVID, so I don't, it hasn't been around very long. So it's, it's higher, higher risk. But again, if you're just playing it based off of, you know, Laguerre, your entry would have been on the 11th. Okay, maybe you exited then on a red dot on the 28th. Two dots later, you can get right back in. So you would have got in right here on 277 and took it up and you're still in the trade. Okay, so you know, I don't trade these because I don't have enough data to support anything else. But if you've got this type of uh, scenario, you know, ADX looks good. There's no reason not to take it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what, was there another one? Let's see. OVID and NBRV. Okay. NBRV.
Okay, so this one has uh, five years of seasonal data and we typically top around March and then head lower. And remember the overall trend on this is lower, right? So what I would be doing, if I was forced to trade NBRV, I would wait for the next short trigger, okay? But if you took the long, absolutely still, if you took it right here, you got in at 285, it's up at, well, right now it's at 328, okay? Um, yeah, you should be in it still, but I'd be waiting for it to turn back around for you, okay? Typically that's what that does. <clears throat> INTU, sure. So definitely like it to the long side. Uh, you know, again, if you took the trade here, again, ADX is low, so you can get some consolidation, but it looks like it may be breaking out here. Uh, but if you were in this trade, again, no red dot yet, right? Now we're heading higher. Okay, just remember you have earnings on the 23rd. <clears throat> but as a longer term play, I like it, like it to the long side. So a next, if you're not in it, a, when you get that next retracement, look for the entry long. Okay, all right, so let me talk a little bit about here. You hide the cryptos. So on the data mining, okay, first of all, I know a few of you on this call use this every day. So it's always fun to listen and talk to something that you, you all are using every day, right? One of the questions I get on the data mining is what's the difference between the data mining and, you know, and your seasonal stuff, right? Well, first and foremost, you know, what I love about the seasonal indicator is anything you bring up that's got five or 10 years of data it gives you the forecast, right? Very helpful, obviously, for obvious reasons. And then the 20, 40, 60 and the gear trigger, right? It gives you percent moves coming that has happened, you know, over the last 12 years. Very, very useful, very helpful, okay? I was able to get this program finally, what, it's been a couple of years now, okay? The data mining I've had for, for a long, much longer time, because I've done it in the past. I used to do it manually. And, and now, you know, with data mining, software packages, I no longer have to do it you know, manually. But what I mean by data mining, and the advantage of data mining is it's, it's based off of the number of years a stock has been in business, okay? So what do I mean by that? So you should, I just did a snapshot and what I did here folks, and let me know if you can't see my Excel looking sheet here, hopefully you can see it though. I just grabbed a few stocks that had uh, December entries, so we could go back and review with an okay, and I sorted it by shorter term trade of 20 days roughly, okay, just just so that we could get a some sort of a a snapshot. So, you know, you UNM. What this is saying, folks, is when you when I data mined, if you entered on December 15th and you exited on January 4th. 29 out of 34 years, you know, which is 85%, you made money on this trade with an average profit of 6%. So this has 34 years of data and it's made money during just this window, 29 out of 34 years, okay? Now, those of you know, I've gone one step further, okay? I don't go in just at, on December 15th. Okay, by market, I'm going in and, and I don't just exit on one four, right? I let my trading system tell me because I'll go in a couple of weeks early. If it triggers, I'll stay out. I'll stay into the trade as long as Hakanachi tells me to stay into the trade now, okay? But for mining, you have to give dates. The bottom line is mid-December, early December, you start looking for longs on UNM, okay? Make sense? So let's take a look. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so UNM. So I'm gonna backtrack here. Okay, so now we're in December. Okay, we're in December. All of a sudden, our friend, Mr. Laguerre on 1229 gives us this long entry, right? And the rest is history, right? 
nice solid profits. My point is, the, you had an 85% probability of it going higher during this window. We waited for a trigger within that window. And again, I'll go in as, as early as two weeks early, okay? So that should have happened. It does year over year over year over year over year, okay? You should all be super excited about technology out there that we're able to mine this, okay? All right, so let me give you another example. You know, I know I get pumped up on this because this stuff's amazing, okay? Again, if a broker called you up 20 years ago and said, Bob, I got a tip for you, young man. Nordstrom goes higher, 1217 to 116, 82% of the time, 28 out of the 34 years it's been in business, you want to put some money in it. Of course I do, right? So let's look at JWN. All right, so we're just, you know, enjoying our Christmas shopping. And let's say right here, okay, you got a trigger right here on the 21st, but you have a red dot. So probably ignore it, but let's say you took it just because it triggered anyway on the 30th. So if you got in here, okay, you got in, let's say at 30 bucks, right? In a matter of a couple, two, three weeks, it went up to 42, okay? My point again, high probability, and you would have probably exited on this red, one of these two Hakanajis, okay? So you made a nice, nice, solid move here on Nordstrom. Let me find, so this is a 12% move, okay, on Illumina, same thing. Again, there's a lot more trades. I'm just showing you some around 20. I just, I just picked a snapshot, okay? But the same thing, ILMN, Okay, so you're in December. The nice thing about Hakanachi, so let's say you didn't get in on the 24th of November too early for you, okay? Well, here's a great example where the Laguerre never gave us another entry from the green, right? But with the data mining, you know you have a high probability. So when do you get in? Well, if you have the scan, this would show up on the yellow to green scan here, right, right here on December 11th. So let's say that would have been our entry. And again, the rest is history, right? The rest is history. Boom. Retracement, let's say you're out, you can get right back in. So again, this really isn't a sales pitch, folks. I just get super excited because if you know that and you have that type of data, again, I, a few of you, I know this is all you use, okay? You could go through all these probably and you're going to have a window that you would have made some money. Okay. And, and now that I think we've got it identified really nicely, you know, we've the Laguerre's phenomenal trigger. Hakanaji is a great way to stay into the trade. You know, the other way you can do something like this is, you know, as you get closer to the time frame, those of you that have more time and like to do this, you can go to your four hour, right? You know, and then so back here, you know, when you have your four hour triggers. Right, you can you can take the trade knowing you have a high likelihood, you know, of it moving. So there's many many ways, you know, many many ways of doing that. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna start doing my Wednesday day trading session. The last week in February. Okay. For those that have purchased that day trading or VIPs, absolutely. And I'll open it up to the public in the future as well as a trial. Okay, so with Trace Station, you have your Laguerre soon to go along in HS, like in the lower plot. Yes, yes. Excellent, Daryl. Thank you. Good to see you. Okay. So again, these are all December timeframes. You know, striker, same thing here, okay? You, you know there's high likelihood. So again, I want to, the Laguerre isn't giving you any new entries at that point. So if you want to be really safe, skip it, or you just wait for that yellow to green within that window, okay? You got in, 
went up, not got went down a couple of days and then hit new highs. Okay, but you know there's a high likelihood of that. Okay. TER, same thing. Same thing. So all of these, all of these uh, that I put in here were that 20, that 20 day window. Okay. 20 day window. Here's another one. Bam. So all these are high probability opportunities with that data mining. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about short flow. We talked a little bit about it last week. Okay. Much more to come on short flow, folks. But what I wanted to do was just give you an update on some. So, you know, I, I created my watch list based on the ones that had the highest amount of short flow. This is super fascinating to me. Again, I'm going to go in much more detail on this in the future. But look at some of these moves, okay? Futu, okay? So we knew, we knew that the, we, this stock has, of all the available stock that's available, 30% of traders and probably more, I don't have data back since 2-2, okay? More than likely, sorry about that if you can hear my, my, my puppy German shepherd, but um, you got this, what happens is once it moves and it scares the heck out of those folks that are short, heavily short, okay? It then has the type of move, okay? So during these type of moves, that's where you can make your money. Again, much more to come on this. So look at something like Huya, okay? Look at today, okay? These are all big moves that happen. It's a fascinating subject because if we know that a stock has a heavily short float, it's just a matter of time it's gonna bust higher, okay? And some of these do match the seasonal side too, okay? But this is not really a seasonal strategy, okay? I mean, you can pick any of these. I'm just, you know, DDS. See how it wham, okay? Wham. Can I say that again? Wham, okay? That got them out of their short positions more than likely, okay? And you're going to get those. So if you get a trigger and you know it has a heavily shorted float, Bam, <laughs> it's just amazing. And, and the way I searched it, so here's one that, you know, I'm not sure yet. So we had the first move up, okay? Now it came back down just like GameStop and anything else, but now we're getting new triggers. So is it gonna do it again? Okay, that's something I'm, I'm still back testing. I'm still looking at, okay? I don't know the answer to that yet. In a, in a couple more, a few more days, we're going to have the more updated short flow. We'll see if this is larger or smaller. It only comes out twice a month that I've found. Okay. But I think it's fascinating because we can, we can then identify and get into some of these wham trades is what I'm calling them. Okay. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just continues to, to nail these folks that are short. Okay. Nail them. Um, you know, FUBU, like I mentioned, had it here, came down, did it again. Um, so anyway, I'm still playing with the short float. I'll, I'll end up doing a, a more rule-based webinar in the future. But it's something to me that is super exciting as a trading strategy because the risk is low and the, the, the reward can be extremely high. Okay, so more to come on that, folks. Okay, I told you I wouldn't be more than 45 minutes today. Uh, again, if you have any questions, you know, please reach out to me again. Let me put in the chat that if you didn't see it the first time, the data mining webinar for tomorrow, there's the link. Uh, if you decide you want to you know, purchase it before the webinar to have it with you, there's the purchase link. But regardless, you should attend it. It'll be recorded, at least register, because then it'll be recorded um, and you'll get to see, you know, some of these high probability opportunities. So with that, folks. Uh, have a great, AJ, I'm going to go in more into that. There's a few things I'm kind of looking at uh, on that and how you find those, okay? So we'll, we'll talk more about that, maybe even next week on that, okay? All right, folks, we'll have a great rest of the week and I wish you the best. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow night. Take care now.